More new Space Marines and Necrons are here. Spiking bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Barrett from SpikyBits.com, and we are taking a look at the new Kill Team Pry and Nexus box. Now, this is the box that, that everybody's been talking about. Uh, it's $160 US, which you know has some folks very opinionated on it, of course. And probably the biggest feature in here, if you play Space Marines, is that it comes with the heavy intercessors uh, that haven't been released previously. And of course, the uh, the new captain with the heavy bolt rifle. On the Necron side of things, the Chronomancer and the squad of five flayed ones. So, as far as Kill Team goes, I'm you know I haven't played Kill Team in like three four years, so I don't really <laughs> know too much about it anymore. But I assume it's balanced because this is like an interior compound, not like. Uh, uh, what was it, Rogue Trader, where they were playing inside of a ship, and then Arena, where they were playing in an installation or something in a building. This is actually like underground and like a, a, a cavern or something like that. And I guess that'll allow the, the flayed ones to kind of sneak up on these guys, kind of like a little space hulky, I suppose. But I'm not 100% for sure, and I'm not really going to dive into it because I think this video should probably be more about taking a look at, you know, the heavy intercessors here and uh, the Necrons kits themselves. Now, value-wise, uh, you know, there has been a, a little bit of a decry out there because uh, folks realize that, hey, this is the only way I can get this stuff. Um, and, you know, <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where you want it and it's the very last releases, at least that we know of right now, for Space Marines and Necrons. And, you know, folks are kind of like, ah, but I don't want to spend uh, $160 on this box when I don't even know how much this stuff's going to be. And, you know, we talked a lot about it on the site and we, we got the estimated values right here, like the Flay ones. They're currently $45 in fine cast, which we all know that, well, it's not the greatest material. Uh, so I imagine they're going to be about $55 when they come out. Space Marine Captain and the Necron Chronomancer are probably going to be uh, $35 each. Um, and the, for all best guess purposes and of course the rumor that we've already heard from an industry insider is that the heavy intercessors are going to be $55 comparable to the chaos happies which you know puts the total value for the box set if you compare the rest of the contents the boards and the necron terrain to $90 which was the same as kill team arena up to about $270 msrp 160 so you know there's a little bit of opportunity here like if you want to split it with a friend you want to get these uh, you know one side or the other depending on what you're playing but overall if you're just after one of the kits in here it's probably better to pick it up from a secondary seller assuming that you know it's not going for more because i could easily see these initially they were going for 80 dollars for the heavy intercessors on ebay uh, earlier in the week so i haven't looked to see what they're going for right now but just be aware that gw did say recently that these kits would all be coming out very shortly now what very shortly means we don't know because you know when the gasgill uh, ragnar box came out about this time last year or maybe it was more into april we didn't see that again until october so that was about a six month gap so will we see these guys in the next couple weeks we've already seen images of the heavy intercessor box so it could be that games workshop feels everybody and they're like okay we need to get this out the door because you know, it's it's not that big of a value. It may actually um, come back and we don't, might not sell a lot of these. I don't know. Currently, it's sold out on GW's website. I suppose it's probably also worth mentioning that, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that play Kill Team that want the contents of this box too. They're kind of in a very similar situation as Necron, as the Necron players and the Space Marine players because maybe they don't want to have to buy a $160 box to get those components and get those boards and get that uh, book. So I could kind of see, you know, uh, everything from all sides right here. So these are the, the sprues themselves and you're going to get two of these uh, for the Necron terrain and they're, you know, nice big chunky sprues. Uh, the box says made in the UK, so I don't know if these are fabricated in China and floated over, although I think they are required to say made in China um, if the whole box was made in China, but perhaps if it wasn't and just components were made in China, they can say made in the UK if uh, they did the assembly in the UK. I don't know UK law. I don't know EU law. I guess they're not even part of that anymore. And then when you get down to here, you're going to see uh, here's the heavy intercessor sprue. Here's the flayed one sprue, which... You know, this is kind of weird. It's it's actually not that big at all, right? So you're like, hmm, five dudes come from the sprue? I mean, they're, they're very small and very fiddly, but um, I don't know. <laughs> There's definitely one, two, three, four, five torsos in here. So this might actually be a two, uh, two sprue kit, and this might actually be, now that I look at it, this could be 10 of these to a box, perhaps, um, for something more reasonable, like, you know, the $60 we've seen in the past. The Necron Warriors uh, push fits were 45, but, you know, that was something straight out of, uh, that was ETB and straight out of Indominus. And then here's the heavy intercessors, which are still on point. 
very similar to what you would expect from a normal intercessor box, right? Except, except for they're heavy and there's only five and they're elites, so you might not need them. And troop wise, uh, the Chronomancer is two sprues right here. We'll take a look, closer look at them. And the heavy uh, intercessor captain is over there. Um, and he's only one sprue. And then they've got this protector here so the sprues don't dig into the books, which I think was a really ingenious idea that they came up with. And then you get into the components, uh, the Pariah Nexus. Uh, um, book here that has the rules uh, for kill team for intercessors and the stuff from Indominus as well and then the instruction manual on how to assemble all that stuff the boards themselves it looks like uh, cards we're not really going to get into that and the bases for the models themselves diving into the instruction booklet i kind of want to see how these are put together so everything matches up with what we got in the box right there which is good i like this new sprue layout so you definitely know it's supposed to come in the box all right heavy intercessor captain let's take a closer look at this um this uh, compare you know it's not the multi-part like hey put the shins on and things like that it looks like it's got a separate arm separate backpack separate head which is kind of cool so you can you know you're not locked into that um this looks like it's a slice with the cape so you're gonna have to do that oh and there's a little doodad where's that doodad oh there it is oh okay so a little clasp goes on the cape there that's kind of cool and then uh the front half kind of sandwich is on here but this is kind of weird i just noticed this first so it doesn't quite lock into the hip. It looks like very, very rarely, or very just a little bit, a little sliver touches the lip right there. And then it locks in with these two dots. So maybe there's a little hose uh, socket or something that locks into that. That's really weird. That's a really weird configuration. Hopefully it's not too fiddly. And then getting into the heavy intercessors themselves, there's a couple of different options. There's like that, the heavy intercessor gun, gunner. I forget what it is. It's like super heavy bolter or something. I forget, but um, it looks like for the most part these go together like a typical Gravis fashion with the little like power things to the boots that go into the hips right there. Um, this particular Model 3 has two different options where he's motioning forward or he's calling for a hold and then you can assemble those either way. It looks like there's a couple different head options, bear, bear heads and helmeted heads. Backpack goes on like normal. Um, model 4, oh I guess they start so it's not really Model 4 so that's... So model two makes two poses, three and four. And then four makes, that's really confusing. Oh, I see, okay, so three does these two, and then four is just a normal gunner, but it looks like he's looking over to his left. And that's this right here. And then this has the different uh, sort of ammo hoppers right here. Like if you, there's some sort of like, um, I don't know what that's called. It just looks like a cartridge or like a, a drum. I, I like drums more. Um, I just think they look cooler. Two different head options right there. And then it looks like, he, it's actually sliced, oh, he's looking back to his right. So maybe that's, maybe you're locked into that pose right there, which would be kind of unfortunate. And then you get the heavy intercessor gunner, which can have the heavy intercessor gunner or the normal um, rifle. And they are both looking to the model's uh, left. So that's, it looks like you're gonna have a definitely dynamic uh, kind of pose to all your squad members here. And then the heavy gunner looks like it has three different options too. Uh, comparable to the rifles, which is kind of cool. I'm personally, I think I'll assemble the one with the with the drum fed right here, because uh, that looks cool. And it's got the power hose feeds right there, and we saw that with the eradicators. Um, hopefully, that's designed pretty well, but we'll find out here in a second. Going through it all, we got some shoulder pads, uh, more optional heads for that guy, and then getting into what is this? The third model in the set it looks like it's very all very similar but this guy's kind of striding he's like taking a couple steps and he's definitely looking to his left and then last but not least is this dude right here which is also looking to his left and also has the customizable um ammo uh options right here oh that wasn't the last one what was that nope that's a different model too and then this one has oh no that's not a different model. oh that's just all the extras they're like hey you can put all these extras on here like the uh uh, holstered weapons or like the ammo hoppers, the auspex, the little um, reliquaries. So that was the last guy. Okay, well, we're, we're muddling through it. We're learning as we go. Now, the Chronomaster, I, I don't know if you remember when we assembled, what was it done? I already broke his arm off accidentally. I need to re glue him. This guy, the Psychomancer, he was kind of fiddly to put together. So I was kind of worried about this Chronomancer here. Um, but it looks like it just flush, you know, fits together just like the Space Marine Heavy Intercessor Captain right there. Looks like it's got a spine on there, and generally the spine has a little prong that hooks into the back of the uh, the head right there. So I'd expect something like that. Now, what is cool about this model is that it has two different staff options, 
and two different little um, things to hold here. Like, I don't know if that's a Rubik's Cube, the Necron Rubik's Cube of Doom, I believe is the official title. And <laughs> um, three different head options too, which is kind of cool. And then this thing here, I don't know what this is. It's like a, the Necron Death Star or something, or I, I don't know, is that the Necron Ruba? Maybe he's uh, looking to clean some floors, I'm not sure. Flayed ones, um, I'm never a fan of the uh, sockets into the uh, back of the torso and then you clamshell it in. Like we, I've seen a lot of issues with that in the past, especially with Necrons that are very, end up being very, very time consuming. But it looks like the slices for the claws are kind of cool, like those lock in. It looks like there's plenty of room for them to lock in. Now, um, I, I talk about this a lot, but using that, that Tamiya heavy um, or super thin plastic cement or plastic glue, that stuff's super strong, and you you really can't go wrong with it on fiddly stuff like this because it, it's so thin, and you, it, it's not going to go everywhere. Like, if you use normal glue, right, like this stuff, and you mess up, this stuff goes everywhere. Like, it basically de facto ruins your model if you make one little slip-up. You make a little slip-up, it's got a little brush applicator with the Tamiya super thin glue. It, it's no big deal. Like, it literally just kind of evaporates almost. So, I would definitely recommend using that on this stuff. And then you can find a, a you know a link to that in the comments and also in uh, the description here. Um, but do yourself a favor and pick something like that up. There's a couple of different companies make a couple of different varieties. All of them are great. Um, but I think uh, Plastract has one too. Um, and it actually bonds the plastic together a little bit. I, I personally like it because of the applicator tip. Uh, Tamiya makes, or not Tamiya, um, Testers makes one too with a metal applicator tip, but it, it doesn't quite go exactly where you want it sometimes. Um, and then these guys, they look to be super fiddly and I'm hoping they're not super time sinks as far as uh, assembly goes, but we'll find out here in a few minutes. And then the terrain, it looks like the only thing you have to actually assemble is these little uh, induction no nodes, diodes, as they're calling them here, but everything else you just clip out and it's good to go. Now, as far as the sprues go, uh, this is pretty chock full of just about everything you would expect on here. So you've got all the backpacks, all the different rifles, and there's a couple different ones for each each guy, it looks like, uh, especially if they have a different ha uh, hand option. And then right here, you can see uh, the rifles that have uh, the different ammo hoppers, and they're all kind of over here out in the, out in the wings of the sprue. And then you've got your, your normal intercessor, or uh, heavy intercessor, or gravis heads right here, shoulder pads, and then it gets into, you know, the backs and the fronts and... Um, it looks like some of them are similar pose wise, but then you, you saw on the diagram there, some of them have the little slices where they're like striding and doing uh, different things right there. So that's kind of a cool little, uh, little kit there. And then this guy seems to be pretty straightforward, like I said, but the one thing I'm worried about is how this piece locks into here. Cause you can see there's tiny, tiny little slice right there. And then there's little dots, which look like they line up with those sockets right there. So that's a that's a little fiddly we'll see how that goes and then the necron chronomancer duder looks to be pretty simplistic front goes on to the back don't have any precariousness uh to it as far as i can tell here quite yet but we'll uh, get that assembled and then the flayed one so that this is this is the kit i'm really worried about um because there's a lot of little fiddly pieces here. Like, just look at it. <laughs> so these arms somehow are supposed to socket into these areas here. And then the fronts like this go into the peg, goes into the hole that keeps those into there, hopefully with a little bit of glue and a little bit of luck. But really it's these legs that I'm looking at, the little uh, socket, the hip sockets that, you know, they don't really, it's not very reinforced there, so I'm kind of wondering how that's going to work, but we'll find out here in a minute. And then we already searched the uh, terrain, so we're just going to plow into it. All right, well, let's go with reverse order here. So the one thing I was worried about the most, uh, the Necron flayed ones, like, uh, let me let me be frank with you. I was super worried about these models, but they go together, so uh, they go together a little fiddly. Like, you do have to line them up in there, and definitely do yourself a favor. Pick up a bottle of this stuff from Amazon, from your local hobby town, your local model shop. This stuff will help you immensely in assembly of uh, figures like this. Or, you know, I, I pretty much use it on everything that isn't Forge World or resin, you know. Um, the, and, and it'll lock in there and give you time uh, to actually get everything positioned, and then it kind of really starts to set. So you can see where they go together, and they, they hold themselves upright, but it's a little bit of a battle to get the hips to kind of stay in there, so you kind of have to hold it for a minute or two. But the posing is just really cool. Like, these guys are creepy. Like, look at them. 
like straight up Edward Scissorhands meets uh, Deadly Robots from uh, space. And you know, they once you know once I, I stood back and kind of looked at it, I was like, this model is actually pretty cool. Like I'm I'm very impressed by the design and the, the layout, and you can see all the little bits of skin on there that you can paint. You can really have fun, and yeah, these are com something completely different from Necron. So I did that guy. And I assembled this guy because he's got a little like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Freddy Krueger kind of vibe going on here with his like crazy little look. And he's just kind of looking at you and kind of, you know, doing the thing with his claws um, or like swiping at somebody right there. And he's a little bit different from his counterpart there. He's got a little bit more um, bits up here like uh, flayed skin and things. And I just thought it was really cool. So we put this one together too. Now size wise, they're on 25 mil bases. So... Uh, actually, yeah, they are on 25 mil bases. Hmm. Uh, so Necron Warrior size, they're actually a little bit smaller, but mostly because they're just kind of hunched over and, and doing their thing. So yay, something smaller than me that's not <laughs> Necron Scarabs. <laughs> Poor Necron Warrior, everybody's bigger than him. <laughs> so I just think these guys were really cool. Um, and then the, the uh, what's his name? Uh, Chronomancer guy went with the, uh, the little round staff right here and this actually locks into one of his tentacles I forget where but somewhere around in here I think um, to kind of form a, like a really solid little assembly right there and I gave him the uh, the Necron Rubik's Cube because uh, I thought it was kind of cool in the one eye because I, I don't know I just think they look very omnious with uh, with like one eye and things this went together way easier than I thought it was going to be and it looks great you know the the little harness here the shoulder harness uh, with all his doodads kind of hides some of the uh, gaps and things on the shoulder once you put it together but there's still this really weird one here around his belt so even with a little bit of this uh this uh thin glue uh, it was i wasn't able to hide it now here's how he compares up to his um compatriot mr psychomancer so he is uh, you know they're both a little dynamic he's probably a little bit more dynamic but um that takes a little bit more time uh to uh assemble and stuff so i i, know, I think the trade-off's pretty good to be quite honest with you uh, marine wise uh, what do we got oh heavy intercessors so here's uh the man the myth the legend himself uh super heavy intercessor he's pretty cool like you know holding everything together and, and lifting that up and i like how they drilled out the barrel right there we gave him the drum because i think the drum looks cooler this locked in together pretty good and there's these little nubs on his backpack that uh you just kind of got to watch out for like they're not the best to lock in you can see right there there's this um peg and hole but over here it's kind of Kind of a little tedious to get in there, but I used the super thin uh, Tamiya glue and it worked just fine uh, after a minute. So it gives you time to position and, uh, you know, correct anything that you might have uh, messed up. And then all of these helmets, not all of them work like if you want to point it forward because they're actually sliced to kind of give you a little bit more depth of it looking to the left. So, you know, he might not have that, that little um, part of his helmet on that back right there. At least some of them were like that. And then we got this guy, which is, again, looking back to his right. And this one is actually sliced. I don't know if you can see it right there. But the, the model actually comes sliced. So you really can't have that looking forward. Uh, it has to kind of be positioned this way. So just be aware of that when you're putting that stuff together. Again, gave him the drum. I think he's pretty cool looking with that. Everything locked in together. You can see where the mold lines are going to be, um, you know, on the front and the back of the legs is most noticeable. But everything else kind of worked out. You got to have to draw out your bolters, too. And then this guy, well, this was the more dynamic one. This was the guy that can hold up his fist to hold or, um, you know, hey, attack over that way or let's go that way. He isn't quite sliced to look to the right, but that is the way they, they said to do it. I think he looks kind of dynamic. Hey, hey, that way or hey, over there, guys. <laughs> um, and then he's just kind of well, holding his weapon right there and has the built-in drum or the built-in ammo. Uh, you don't really have a choice about that one, but I think it's pretty cool looking. Um, and then last but not least is the heavy intercessor captain and you can notice one thing right off the bat he's very dynamic he's got a lot of depth to him um the composition is pretty cool of the model you know he's hold, kind of holding his sword holding up his his rifle right there he's got this reliquary thing on the back um and then this little uh, class which is pretty cool i think it's uh, i think it's very well done composition wise uh model wise you're gonna want to use your uh tamiya glue to kind of uh, make sure you gap fill that right there so you get a nice smooth uh kind of uh fill on the cape so you can paint that up nice and neat but uh, this shoulder pad is separate and this head is separate, but that's about all the options you kind of have as far as this model goes. And of course, you're still gonna have to drill out the bolter. Now, he compares to the uh, Space Marine Captain from Indominus. They're about the same size, even though they're different types of armor, I think. I think they're different types of armor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. One's Gravis, one's not. So just to something to kind of keep in mind right there, about the same size, of course, you know, he's gonna look bigger because he's on the terrain bits. And then when it comes to uh, the heavy intercessors versus normal intercessors, well, they're on a bigger base, of course. 
and then they're not much bigger they're just kind of thicker <laughs> thick just kind of thicker and bulkier but kind of what we would expect i suppose so very very neat kit overall now of course everything we assemble here we always send out to our patrons so if you're into trying something a little different or perhaps just want to get a uh, monthly crate or uh, help support what we do here uh, just get some miniatures back in the in in the mail each month or each quarter kind of depends on which option you pick we do have some openings still looks like we got some at the the double value 99 dollars box 100 dollars box is sold out currently um, but lots of other options in here the 45 dollars uh, box is pretty good because you get 60 dollars back uh in miniatures right there and i think there's some there yep there's some openings on that one as well it looks like there's about 10 left on that one um but you can support for as little as 10 or 15 dollars a month to get ad free access to uh, all our platforms as well as some miniatures and our gift bag uh, back in the mail the very first month you sign up as well so help support what we do here and get miniatures like what i just showed you just now back in the mail every month so that's it for this one y'all thank you very much for watching our unboxing build of the new uh, prior nexus kill team expansion be on the lookout for the new heavy intercessors uh, the Necron Flayed ones, and of course the two HQ choices as well, hopefully as a separate release from Games Workshop very soon. And don't forget, you can always get your hobbies for less from Dicehead.com, uh, Amazon, or hopefully your local game store as well.